right? Now let me give you the good first tip, because this is going to show you kind of where you are, where you are specifically when it comes to God. That's okay. where you want to know. You want to know where you are when you stand with God. At the end of the day, you want to know where we stand. With God. I understand. All right? So I'll give you the good first tip. I'm not judging you, so you're the judge. Now, Mr. Mr. What? Mr. Neil. Ronnie Neil. 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 Mr. Yeah. Mr. Neil. How many lies have you told in your life? Oh, I don't know. About what? Say that. In your whole life combined. I don't know. Lives. I can't keep on mind either. <laughs> what do you call somebody telling a bunch of lies? A liar. Have you ever stolen anything? Yes. All right. What do you call somebody that's stealing? Even a if thief. Those, all right. Have you ever used guys name as a cuss word? Like OMG. I put that on G-O-D. Yes. I right. say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what that was punishable by death in the Old Testament? That's blaspheming God's name. Use his name for just no reason in vain. Did you know that? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. And you know why we use his name like that? Like, would you use your mom's name as a, as a cuss word? No, no. Why? Because uh, I wasn't programmed to. No. I mean, nobody just come up with the word. You heard it from someone. Exactly. It's disrespectful to use your mom's name as a cuss word, but we use God's name like that all the time. Yeah. Because we don't really, sometimes don't really respect it. The only time, sometimes we want, like when we want God, is when we're in trouble or when we need something. Yeah. So we just don't really respect it. Most no, of the time. Uh, uh, uh. That ain't you? Uh, uh. All right, let's get uh, that one. Let's get that one. <laughs> all right, have, uh, have you ever um, been in a situation where you felt so angry, you felt like you could have really put some pain on somebody? Mm -hmm. You know what the Bible equates that with? Mm -hmm. It says murder. First John chapter 3, verse 15 says, you hate your brother. I have some type of angst in your heart for your brother. You're a murderer in your heart. So what does somebody feel before they kill somebody? Anger. Yeah, and the Bible says when you feel that, you, you break the standard right when you feel it. All right, have you looked at someone lustfully or had sex out of marriage? Absolutely, absolutely. You know what the Bible equates that with? Good. It says adultery or fornication, sex outside of God's design. It's nothing, it's nothing sex is wrong, it's that when we take it outside of God's design, it's like fire in the fireplace. As long as the fire stays in the fireplace, it warms the house. You take the fire, put it on the carpet, and the couch, it burns it the house down. When we can't take sex, sex outside of God's design, man, it just destroys us. And at some point, even though it feels good. All right? Mm -hmm. What you thinking? You know, it's I'm out for, it's crazy, man. I'm a spiritual person, right? Okay. And this is a funny thing. I'm, I'm glad you're recording this, and I want to say, okay? <laughs> organized religion. Yes. You know, it's so many Christians. Yep. Fighting their flesh, they tell you your flesh is uh is bad. You know. So that's just like putting a steak in front of someone. <laughs> Don't eat that. <laughs> that's that's God, that's sin. No, it ain't that's your natural that's nature. that's that's nature. So that's what you got. So I'm saying I think a lot of our a lot of the a lot of our traditions, okay. a lot of things that may be in the written word may be you. more of uh Gestures of devotion that gotcha. have been trickled down for thousands and thousands of years gotcha. that have been implemented and, yeah. and and because a lot of it, you know, I've heard so many things. I've even heard pastors say, "Hey, don't take that. These are just stories. Yeah. These are just stories. Don't take, to, it, as fact. Don't take it as facts. Yeah. It wasn't a snake that that said, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. But who? We don't know. We, don't we know only that. know what you, you know. So, yeah. I'll, this is what I'll say in a, in a total. Yeah. The only. I have, you have organized religion, yes, which sir. is a set of things that and gestures that are put in place yes, sir. To, ser to, to show your devotion to God. Yes, sir. And I believe you have personal experiences that you personally no. have had yeah. with God. Gotcha. And I think for me personally, yeah. those are the ones. The times where he made a way where yeah. there was no way. Sure. The time yeah. where he got me out of this when I didn't. Yeah. The time when I begged and yeah. the, the time when you know it wasn't nothing but God. Yeah. That's what I stand on. But you know what you're doing? I'm going to tell you what you're doing. You're breaking the first commandment. Let me just tell you why. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Let me tell you. I'm not judging. You're going to do a lot of cutting in this. I'm, I'm here a lot of cutting. Let me tell you why. See, when somebody told me that having sex outside of marriage is wrong, you know what I want to do? I want to change the rules. You know why? Because I didn't want to give it up. It felt so good. So I, what I did is I said, that's not my God. So I made a God of my own image. It wasn't the God of the Bible. It was the God that made me feel good about what I was doing. That I knew was wrong. I just had to change him up a little bit so I could keep being comfortable with what I was doing. That's not But see, I'm gonna say what something you too. You see how that one that uh -huh. white woman was here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's one word. Okay. It's supposed to be one word, uh -huh. one God. 
I don't know how many denominations it is. There's a bunch of denominations. And Christianity is split up between white and black. It is. It ain't no white. It ain't no white. I actually, white guy say, why? If it was one word, why we ain't all in church together? He said, there's been tradition. You know what? I, you got a great point there. All right. Let me, I'm going to come down to the close here. But I'm gonna, But what I just went over is just basic stuff that's on your heart that you we know is wrong. Lying. Adultery. Yeah. Like this stuff is just innately wrong. I, even if you've never seen the Bible, you know this stuff is wrong. Because mm -hmm. it's on your heart. Yeah. So, But there's a time to lie. There's a okay. time to steal. There's a okay. time to kill. There's a time to cry. There's a time to curse. I, 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 you know, I see what you're saying. Based on the world standards, you're right. But on God's standards, it, it'd be like a man that stands before a judge. This man has murdered a bunch of people, and he says the reason I had to murder is because I had to survive or I had to steal. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it, but it still doesn't change the rule of it. It doesn't change the overall law of it, right? So here's what I'm saying. God is a righteous and he's a good judge. If you stand before him tonight, knowing that you're guilty, and he's a good judge, what do you think he's going to do to you on the day of judgment? Be a good judge? No. Well, I'll tell you like this. Uh -huh. From my experience with judges, okay. me and you can go in the courtroom uh -huh. with the same case. Yep. That judge gonna look at you uh -huh. and look at me in the okay. eye, yep. and we'll get two different. Uh, That's one hundred percent right. But she's gonna, right. she because the he name of her, her, her name judge. She's gonna judge the case. She knows. She knows. You're right. So so that judge might say because. Right. <laughs> but if they did it according to. Hey, and I'm not trying to contradict no, no, no. what you're saying. I, like, I love this. This is this is really helps. Here's what I'm saying. God doesn't change his laws. He looks at it cut and dry. Yeah. So if you stood before God tonight and he judged you based on his standard, he can't let you go free. Because he's a good judge. It's like a murderer who stands before a judge and he tries to pay the man off. People people pay the judge off all the time. No, I understand that. But see, we can't pay God off. Yeah. We can't be good enough to pay him off. He has to punish him for what we did wrong. So based on what the Bible says, if God is good, he'll give you what the good judge is supposed to do. He'll give you, the Bible says there's a real place called hell. This is why a lot of people go to hell because they change God to fit their own desires and they, they don't understand that God is holy, he's righteous. Like if you, you was drinking a, a, a you was drinking a, a cup here and had your favorite drink in it, if I took one drop of sewage, you wouldn't drink it. Yeah. One drop contaminates the whole rest. If God let one of your sins in the heaven, Without punishing or cleaning it up, he will be a bad judge. Right? So here's what God has to do. He has to punish sin. That's why he, that's why hell exists. But let me tell you the good news. If you would like the good news, <laughs> the last thing I share with you, just imagine right now, you're charged with murder. You stood before the judge. The judge pronounces you with the electric chair. They put you in an orange suit, 10 days later come, they put the electrical bucket on your head, they strap your both arms in, put the chest compression over your legs on, strap your legs in. All of a sudden, right before the execution about to flip the switch, in walks the judge that rightfully gave you a sentence. <laughs> he stands there and he looks at you with the most compassionate eyes. And to everybody's shock, he calls his 18-year-old innocent son into the room. Now it gets really weird. I'll see your expression change. His 18-year-old son comes to the room. The judge looks at his son and says, son, do you remember what we talked about? His 18-year-old son looks at you and says, daddy, I, I remember what we talked about. He says, Daddy, hand me the keys. He goes over and puts the keys and unstraps you and tells you to stand next to the chair and gives you the biggest hug and look at your eyes and say, I'm about to show you mercy. He sits, his 18-year-old son sits in your place. The judge comes over with his handshake and straps his innocent son in the chair. While you're standing there looking at looking like you're looking out, you're standing like, what is going on? I'm the murderer. What is he doing with his innocent son? When well, the judge goes out of the room, puts his hand on the switch, and with tears in this judge's eyes, his hands are shaking. He flips the switch, executing his 18-year-old innocent son for you to murder. The judge comes back, and as soon as he sees his son's body sitting there, completely burned to death, he breaks down on the floor and starts crying. He says, my son, my son. And he looks at you and says, if you would accept what my son has done in this chair, I'll let you go with no penalty. You look at that judge, and you're, you, you embrace what that judge has done with his son. He says, you're free to go. I can no longer charge you. My son has paid your fine. You're free to go. How would you live? You'll never be the same. Well, this is what the Bible says God did for me, for me and you, the whole world. Like, the sin of the world is what killed his son. Your sin is what put him on the cross. He loved us enough to send his son. And he executed Jesus in our place. It was supposed to be us. But that's the good news. He's paid the debt. All the sin in the world has been paid for. But the problem is, you're still in the debt of your sin because you've never 
surrendered your rights and gave it all to Jesus and say, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life now. Whatever you want from me, I will follow you. And if you will do that and say, God, I'm sorry, it's repent and you will believe. The Bible says God will transfer the innocence of Jesus to your account. And you will stand before God as if you never committed a crime against heaven. Because Jesus paid your fine, you can walk into heaven with no penalty. That's the only way you can be made right. If you try to save yourself, man, God will, he will do what a good judge does. Most people are going to hear this message. And what they'll do is, they'll do what the man they will reject what the judge has done in the, in the lecture chair. So if you reject what the judge has done with his son in the lecture chair, the judge stands up and looks at you. What do you think he's going to do with you then if you reject what his son has done in the chair? The reason why God sends people to hell is because they reject what Jesus has done on the cross. They want to go their own way. They want to make their own God. But if you accept what Jesus has done on the cross, the Bible says he will pay your fine in full. Start a relationship with you right where we sit at and change your whole direction, give you new desires, new affections. But you must repent and put your faith totally in the only one that you have hope in. If you don't, if you don't go Jesus' way, then you'll never be saved. You'll never be right with God. Other religions say, I can work to get to heaven by performance. Jesus says, no, you can't. I have performed for you. Just accept the gift. God changed your whole life. That's the whole story in the Bible. Now, it answers four questions. Why is the world broken? It's because we went our own way. I in the middle of the city. What, what's, what's your purpose? It's to give God glory. He gave his son for you. It only makes sense for you to give your life to him. Why is it, what, what's the fix? The fix is Jesus. Well, how do we get here? God created us. That's why we have a purpose. But we went our own way, but Jesus paid the price. Very simple questions. But they're answered based on what the Bible says. If you will follow Jesus, he'll have mercy on you. But if you go your own way, he'll only live to give you wrath because you rejected the son. What you think? I'm just, I'm just thinking. I don't. I, I'm just thinking. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Okay. I've been hearing that many years. Yes, I'm I'm a numbers guy, and I'm, I'm older now. I'm 48 okay. years old. I'm almost 48. 49 years old. I'm almost yep. 50 years old. Yep. I don't look like it. Now you don't. And I'm looking at the numbers, and I'm looking like, I'm listening to you, yep. and I'm like, man, uh -huh. out of the numbers. I don't hear no white people saying Jesus. The most black people, the only people I hear screaming Jesus is black folks. If I look at the denominations and the numbers, yep. statistically, I'm like, whoa, this is a black thing. Now, let me tell you this. Even black people screaming Jesus on their way to hell too. <laughs> I'm serious. You know that. Based on what their actions, you know they ain't right either. Oh yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I don't want I want you to look at you and Jesus. Don't look at nobody else. No, I, I no, I don't. See what I'm saying? But but I've um, Numbers don't lie. Yeah, numbers don't numbers lie. Numbers don't lie. Yeah. And statistically, yeah. there's more black people saying Jesus yeah. than any other uh, ethnic group. And there's more black than if we are the, the worst off. Yeah. Man, I don't know. I'm going to encourage you to follow me. Because the numbers say in the Bible that narrow is the way that needs to lie. You know that you find like only a few people find him. I like <laughs> You knew that already. Did. This is I didn't think people, about that. Very few people who get it. You know what? Yeah, we got to go. We got to go. Okay. Thank you, man. No, God bless you, man. You and too, I'll, brother. And I'll, I got your number. I'll text yeah, you. Put it 